Polio is not much of a problem anymore. It's almost fully eradicated. Recently, we've only seen cases in Nigeria, Afghanistan, Pakistan, but 60 years ago, the virus was all over the world, literally in the community swimming pool. So how did we get to where we are today? You guessed it, vaccines. There are two polio virus vaccines, which we call the Salk vaccine and the Sabin vaccine, because Salk and Sabin were the people who created them. The Salk vaccine was licensed first in 1954, and to make his vaccine, Dr. Salk took a bunch of polio viruses, uh, three different strains, inactivated them with formaldehyde, and then injected them into people. And because they were inactivated, they could not infect cells, but the immune system could still see them and develop IgG antibodies against them. So we call this kind of vaccine inactivated, or sometimes dead, although viruses aren't really ever alive to be able to die. And the Sabin vaccine was licensed in 1961, just a couple of years after the Salk vaccine. So Sabin was convinced that he knew of a better way to make a vaccine than Salk. And his strategy was, instead of inactivating the virus, to attenuate it. And attenuated means that the virus would still have some ability to infect humans, but less than the actual virus. So he gave this attenuated virus to people orally so that it would infect cells in the GI tract. And why would he do that? Well, it turns out that when you're infected with a virus in your intestine, you develop a special kind of gut immunity with IgA antibodies to the virus that are secreted into the intestine. And that's in addition to the IgG response that you get in your blood. Whereas with Salk's vaccine, you only get the IgG response. So what makes one vaccine better than the other? Well, the key fact is that people who got the Salk vaccine could still get poliovirus infections in their gut. If the virus tried to spread to the blood and then the central nervous system, then the IgG immunity would stop it. So polio could not cause systemic or CNS disease, but it could replicate in the GI tract and then be shed in the feces, which means it could still be spread to others. Whereas Sabin's vaccine prevented gut infections and thus decreased transmission of the virus, leading to more herd immunity. And herd immunity means that unimmunized people are protected too because there's less virus circulating. Another interesting fact is that in some places with poor hygiene, and a lot of fecal oral transmission, Sabin's vaccine itself could actually be transmitted from person to person. Because remember, it was replicating in the gut and being shed in the feces. And that's a potential selling point because it means that for each vaccine given, that vaccine could actually reach more than one person. So those are the main differences between Salk's vaccine and Sabin's vaccine. Basically, the Salk vaccine came out first, saved thousands of lives. The Sabin vaccine came out next and replaced the Salk vaccine because it was more protective. And it was really the Sabin vaccine that was responsible for almost eradicating polio worldwide. And based on that, you probably think that today we still use Sabin, right? Well, actually, in the U.S., we use Salk again. We went back to it. Why? Because since the Sabin vaccine is infectious, it can on very rare occasions cause disease, either because it reverts genetically to a more dangerous type or because someone is immunocompromised and even the attenuated vaccine can cause disease. So since polio is eradicated in the US, that very, very tiny risk of paralytic polio caused by the vaccine makes the Sabin vaccine not worth it. So we went back to Salk. So that's the story of polio vaccines.